Now NBC5 investigates. It was last month we brought you the story of two 17-year-old girls who were killed in Morton Grove back in 1979. Their murders are still unsolved. Now we've uncovered new information their family told us they had never seen. Here's Bennett Haberly. I'm sorry, but it's been hell. Four decades after the murders of Yvonne Bender and Susie Ovington, their families still feel the heartbreak as if it happened yesterday. She was my baby, and all this happened. I'm some stupid idiot out there, and I'm sorry if I use those words that had to take her life. On September 5, 1979, the girls were headed to a shopping center in Morton Grove when they disappeared. <laughs> Authorities believe the girls were attacked and killed in this open spot. Their bodies found at a forest preserve that night. In all the years since, Yvonne's sister Sherry Peterson says she's heard virtually nothing from the Morton Grove police. I might call up and say, what's going on? Anything going on? But I still get the same story over and over again. Now, some of the girls' classmates have taken up the search for answers. That, I know it's solvable. We just need the police to help us. Tom Sprague is one of the classmates offering detectives time, knowledge, and even money in hopes of finally cracking the cold case that haunts their hometown. I don't think they care. I really don't. If you cared, you would do more. If you cared, you'd be responding to the family's inquiries. Morton Grove police have declined our multiple requests for an interview. Over the years, they tell us the case has been reviewed several times and that investigators started fresh again in 2020. We wanted to know what specific steps they've taken to solve this crime. For that, NBC5 Investigates filed two open records requests. The first was to the Illinois State Police, which does DNA testing for local law enforcement agencies. We obtained about a dozen reports dating back to 2005. In 2008, the first mention of a suspect whose name was redacted. An RC Cola bottle and two cheek swabs were compared to DNA found under Susie's fingernails. No match. Another flurry of activity in 2011. Morton Grove sent clothing, fingerprints, hair samples, and more to the state lab. Again, nothing. What's more, one report notes hair can only be compared within six years of the offense. And by then, this crime was already well past that window. These reports are just one small piece of the puzzle, and they still leave us with more questions than answers. But Susie and Yvonne's families tell us it's more than they've ever seen. I've never seen anything. The Ovingtons, the Benders have never seen that. Absolutely not. Do they still have all this material? But we never received anything, um, belongings and stuff. So I don't even know if the police still have it in storage. The second public records request was made to Wharton Grove for their files on the case. That request was denied, citing the ongoing investigation. So now we're taking our fight to court, filing a lawsuit to compel Morton Grove to turn over the records show us what's been done. There's something very disturbing going on here. The fact that you have to file a lawsuit to get this information after 44 years. I say, let's do it and and let's get some answers here. And, you know, I don't I don't want no sugarcoating and saying we're working on it. Well, show me some proof that you're working on it. Since our last update in September, Morton Grove police tell us they've received 25 tips. They continue to encourage people with information about this case to contact them. Bennett Haverly, NBC5 Investigates.